A staple of daytime TV since 1972, The Price is Right is the longest-running game show in American television history. Hosted by the iconic Bob Barker for more than 35 years and 7,000 episodes, it's continued to thrive after Barker's retirement under the stewardship of comedian Drew Carey. But how much do you actually know about this television institution? Here's a look at the untold truth of The Price is Right. Let's make a deal. When The Price is Right debuted in 1972, it was actually titled The New Price is Right, a title it kept for a little under a year. That's because it was loosely based on a primetime game show that had aired as early as 1956, where contestants won small prizes by guessing how much household items cost. But by the 70s, the original concept was deemed too boring. Instead, CBS told producer Mark Goodson that if he wanted to revive The Price is Right, he should look at their hit game show Let's Make a Deal for inspiration. He did, borrowing a slew of gimmicks, like pulling people out of the studio audience to be contestants, using lights and sound effects to get the crowd hyped, and having the contestants play lots of different little games, like the cultural phenomenon cliffhangers. There's no way that microwave costs more than 300 bucks. Stop here! Don't, don't listen to that fat tourist! She doesn't know how much a microwave costs! Stop! <laughs> The best of the best. Every game show has a different process for contestant selection. Jeopardy, for example, is quite rigorous, putting prospective guests through multiple written tests, an interview, and a live test version of the game against other hopefuls. The Price is Right is far more immediate. On taping days, contestants slash studio audience members line up for as long as four hours outside Babaka Studio at CBS Television City in Los Angeles. Then, ten at a time, they're herded in front of a producer, who asks them each one question. Well, they've got to show off a sparkling personality and lots of energy. Only about 100 people People also get picked to sit in the studio audience, and the lucky contestants find out they've been selected when the announcer calls their name. How about if we call Katie Hudson? Come on down! You're the next contestant on The Price is Right! Showcase Showdown Showdown in 2008, a huge Price is Right fan named Terry Nice was picked to come on down to contestants' row. He made it all the way to the showcase showdown, where he did something that nobody in the show's history had done, before or since. He guessed the exact price of his prize package. Taping stopped for almost an hour, as the producers and host Drew Carey were sure Nice had cheated. But he hadn't. Instead, he had studied the show for years, and realized that many prizes were repeated. So he memorized the prices of all the prizes and added them up in his head during his appearance. As a result, he won both showcase prize pools, and The Price is Right changed their prize structure to include more variance in price structure. Bit $23,743. Actual retail price, $23,743. You got it right on the nose. Replacing a legend. Finding a replacement for Barker wasn't easy. The search was so difficult, in fact, that he even offered to delay his retirement if a new host couldn't be found in time. Numerous stars secretly recorded mock episodes as hosts, including George Hamilton, Ian Ziering, Mario Lopez, John O'Hurley, Antiques Roadshow host Mark Wahlberg, and former Double Dare host Mark Summers. Summers was Bob Barker's first choice as replacement, but after CBS chairman Les Moonves saw Kerry hosting the primetime game show Power of Ten, he offered Carey the gig. Too bad Adam Sandler didn't audition. The price is wrong, bitch. A brand new car! As Benjamin Franklin once famously said, only two things in life are certain, Plinko and taxes. And California takes their game show taxes very seriously. They actually treat game show winnings as income, and contestants are required to pay taxes on the spot before they can take their prizes home. Luckily, many contestants also win money on the show in addition to prizes, so it's common for them to pay taxes using their prize money. And there's a bunch of red tape around that brand new car, too. Winners don't drive home with their sweet ride. Instead, the show sends them to a local dealership to coordinate delivery of the vehicle at a dealership near the contestant's home, assuming they have already paid all those taxes and registration fees first. It's your brand new car! 